Welcome back. Okay, we're talking about nonlinear system identification for control purely from data. Okay, so we've been using data driven regressions uh, to obtain both linear and nonlinear system models. And we've talked about how you can use model predictive control once you have those system models. Uh, to optimize your control strategy for nonlinear control. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about now is essentially how do I combine model predictive control with something like uh, Cindy, a sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics with control model. Okay, so this is kind of the overarching model predictive control framework. Um, this is in the context of a reference tracking problem, and this is, you can read more about this in Ulrike Kaiser's archive paper on model predictive control with with sparse nonlinear models. Um, here's kind of the block diagram of what model predictive control is doing. You essentially have some reference value you're trying to track. You have some predictor. This is the model of your system. So this is where your Cindy with control model is going to be. And essentially, at every time step, what you do is you use this model to optimize your control input over some short time window. And then you use that control input that, that first value of your optimizing control signal, you enact that, you see where your system goes, and then at the next time step, you rerun an optimization. So for every time step, you're running an optimization into the future based on your model, and you're picking the first actuation signal and using it, then you reinitialize your optimizer, pick the next first actuation signal, initialize it, and you keep walking forward in time that's essentially what model predictive control is doing. So over here, you can see this in, in a cartoon. You have your actual state uh, trying to track some set point. This is your optimizing. Uh, this is what your, your model thinks is the optimum control input in the future. And you essentially lock in this optimizing control value for the next time step. Your system steps forward. And then you reinitialize your optimization. You move this window over, and you redo everything again. You re-optimize. You pick that next control value. You step your system forward. You re-optimize, and so on and so forth. So model predictive control is extremely flexible, very, very powerful. This is the industry standard um, kind of advanced process control uh, now because it's so flexible, and you can include constraints. You can do this for nonlinear systems. In the past, because this optimization was run at every time step, this was pretty expensive. And so often this was only feasible for linear models. Okay, so for linear or linear per parameter varying models. But as computers are getting faster and faster, essentially it's getting more and more feasible for us to use nonlinear models in this predictor step. Okay, so what Urica has done is essentially taken these nonlinear model identification techniques like Cindy, sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics, and she's using those directly for online control in a model predictive controller. So just to refresh your memory, this is the Cindy with control diagram. So you have uh, data collected from some unknown system. So you measure the states in time and the actuation signal u. You build a big nonlinear library of candidate functions for the right-hand side of these dynamics. And you apply sparse regression to find the fewest active terms uh, in the dynamics that agree with your data. So you get this sparse nonlinear system that also includes the effective actuation. Okay, that's Cindy with control. And what Urica is doing is now using these identified models, these purely data driven sparse models, with model predictive control. The cool thing about this uh, framework with using uh, these Cindy models for model predictive control is that unlike other nonlinear system identification, because these are sparse models, they only have the, the fewest necessary terms required to describe these measured dynamics. These are actually pretty fast to simulate. I'm not simulating really, really complicated deep neural nets uh, or kind of black box models. These are very efficient to simulate because they have the fewest terms required to explain the dynamics. And they're also highly interpretable. So you can actually read off what terms are active in the dynamics and interpret what the nonlinearities are. You can do analysis. You can find fixed points, anything like that. Okay, But these are especially good for model predictive control because they're very, very fast. And they can also be identified using very small amounts of data compared with neural networks. OK, so Urica has applied this to tons of different systems. She's applied it to the predator-prey model. 
the chaotic Lorentz system. She's also applied it to flight control of a fighter and HIV suppression in an HIV model. So you can use this data-driven model discovery and model predictive control framework in all of these examples. You can read about it in her archive paper. And I'm just gonna walk you through how this works on the Lorentz system, okay? So essentially what we're looking at here are the uh, X, Y, and Z time traces for the Lorentz system. That's that chaotic Lorentz system we saw before. Um, for about, I guess, 10 time units for various degrees of noise, okay? So this eta is the noise parameter and it starts off small, medium, and large. And what we're plotting here is the performance of a Cindy with control model and a neural network model uh, for these time windows and increasing noise. And what you can see here is for small amounts of noise, the Cindy model actually qualitatively tracks the true dynamics for a very long time, even though this is a chaotic system, it's actually able to capture many of these oscillations uh, and lobe switches of the system until it starts to deviate around here, around you know, time 37. Whereas the neural network model is deviating significantly earlier, even for a very small noise. Now here, you can see that as I increase the noise, the Cindy model starts to disagree with the, the true model um, more rapidly, but the qualitative dynamics, the fact that the system has lobe switching and spends a certain amount of time on one lobe and other amounts of time on the other, are actually qualitatively captured quite well by the Cindy model, even for large noise. So even with large noise, the Cindy model is qualitatively capturing the right dynamics. It's just that because the system's chaotic, this noise is causing those two systems to diverge earlier in time. But you'll notice that as I increase the, the noise, the neural network model starts to get worse and worse. The qualitative aspect of the neur neural network model is degrading over time for increasing noise, even though the Cindy model is capturing these dynamics. Okay, so we haven't done any model predictive control yet. This is just comparing the actual uh, model performance of Cindy with control versus neural networks for the Lorentz system. And you can see that because we're doing this sparse regularized regression, we can essentially get away with uh, cleaner models that handle noise a little bit better, okay? And because the actual structure of the model is identified instead of a black box, uh, the model predictions in the future are qualitatively more accurate. Now, neural networks, I shouldn't disparage them too much because the Cindy model works essentially because um, I had the right dynamics in the library. Okay, so the actual true Lorentz dynamics were in the library that I used for Cindy. If my library didn't include those dynamics, it would be terrible. Okay, and so the neural network model is in general, more powerful for unknown dynamics, really, really complicated dynamics, I can fit a neural network model, whereas the Cindy model really requires that you have um, the right library to represent those dynamics. But if you do it, it performs very well. And so here's a kind of distillation of that first figure where as we increase the noise magnitude eta, you can essentially see what is the prediction horizon for how long can I predict in the future before my model deviates beyond an acceptable tolerance. And you can see that consistently as noise increases, Cindy has a larger prediction horizon than neural networks, which means that it should be more useful for model predictive control, okay? So the Cindy uh, model agrees with the actual true measurement data for longer, even in increasing noise. And so here's kind of the overview uh, figure of how Cindy works with model predictive control on the actual Lorentz system. Okay, so this is what we just saw, this increasing noise magnitude and prediction horizon. Um, what we find is that also the execution time, so the Cindy model executes much, much more rapidly than the neural network. So uh, the Cindy controller runs in about 1.6 time units, whereas the neural network takes 35. So the neural network is much more expensive to simulate and less accurate, and the Cindy model is essentially giving you these very uh, fast and accurate model predictions for, uh, for model predictive control. It also requires way less training data and is much faster in terms of training time. Okay, so the Cindy model is faster and uh, as a function of the training data, and it also, as a function of how much training data you have, Cindy identifies the correct model much, much more rapidly. 
Okay, so we're, what we're trying to assess is if I only had limited data to train these neural network and Cindy models, what would I, what kind of model would I get? So as I increase the amount of training data I have, you can see that the neural networks are very slow, expensive to train, whereas Cindy is fast to train, about two orders of magnitude faster. Actually, maybe four orders of magnitude faster. And in addition, as I increase the amount of training data available, very rapidly the Cindy model has enough data to identify the correct model, and the pr prediction horizon is good, whereas it takes much more data for the neural network to identify an equivalent model. Okay, so it takes much, much more data for the neural network to get a good model than for Cindy to get a good model. And then finally over here, what we see is, you know, we had these three different phases. So we train our data on this, uh, this type of data. Then we change the control signal and we see how good our prediction is in this window. And then finally what we do is we enact our model predictive controller in this last phase to try to stabilize a fixed, a fixed point of, you know, X, Y, and Z. And you can see that the Cindy model very, very uh, rapidly is able to stabilize these, even for a nonlinear system, using this model predictive controller. Okay? So Cindy is able to accurately uh, and aggressively stabilize the system on these values using the model that it learned in this training period, okay? just using model predictive controller. So Eureka has applied this to many, many more systems, just like we talked about. Um, here, you've, she's applied this to uh, Predator, Prey, Fighter, Jet, HIV, and Lorentz. And so you can read all about this and kind of figure out how you could apply this to your system. But really what you need to know is if you have measurement data of the state of your system and the control input, you can build a Cindy with control model. And then if you have some control objective, you can obtain that control objective by using model predictive control wrapped around that Cindy model. Okay, thank you.